Hi, right, engineers. In this video, we're going to talk about the vascular arm. We're going to cover both the arteries and the veins in this model. Now, just a little bit of orientation. This is going to be our left arm right here. Okay, so left humerus, left radius, ulna, left hand, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the arteries. We're going to take it from the axillary artery all the way down. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come back up with the veins. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so let's go ahead and start here. I'm just gonna kind of touch these instead of using the pointer because it's gonna be easier to move these vessels around. All right, so first thing here, we have the axillary artery. Okay, so this is the axillary artery. Then the next one that we're gonna have here, <clears throat> I'm gonna take this off here so we can see it a little bit better, but I'm gonna have this right here. This guy right there is called the anterior humeral circumflex artery. Okay, so that's the anterior humeral circumflex. The posterior humeral circumflex, I'm just gonna kind of rotate this around a little bit here. And there's going to be that part right there, and that's called the posterior humeral circumflex artery. All right, so now we're going to come down the axillary artery here. So if we come down the axillary artery, it's going to feed into this guy right here, which is our brachial artery. So all the way down here, number three, this is our brachial artery. Now the brachial artery is going to give off some little minor branches. So <clears throat> if you remember from our video that we did on the wire man, we have here this first one. This guy right here is called the deep brachial artery. In case you have the deep brachial. Then after that, you go to the next one, number five, and this guy right there is gonna be the superior ulnar collateral, okay? Come down another one, number six. That's called the inferior ulnar collateral artery. So we have axillary, anterior and posterior circumflex humeral, brachial, deep brachial, superior ulnar collateral, inferior ulnar collateral. Okay, now, we're gonna continue our way down. I'm gonna kinda of pull this up here, and what happens is, the brachial artery comes down to around the antecubital region and splits into two big vessels. One vessel is going to go down the thumb side. So that's this guy right here. This is called the radial artery. He goes all the way down to the hand. Okay, so this is the radial artery. The other one is going to split and go down towards the pinky side. And that's going to be this one right here, and this is called the ulnar artery. Okay, so radial and ulnar. Now, off of that, you're going to see that there's a little branch off of the ulnar right here. This guy right here, uh, number 40 is going to be called the common interosseous artery. So this one right here that I'm, I'm uh, fondling around there, all right? Then the common interosseous artery, if we come down here a little bit more, I'm gonna peel this back here, it's gonna split into two vessels. One is gonna go posterior, so it's this one that I'm gonna pull out here. This one right there that I'm kind of pushing out like this, this is called the posterior interosseous artery. The other one that I'm pushing out at you, number 10, is the anterior interosseous artery. So the common interosseous splits into the posterior and the anterior interosseous artery. Okay, now, after that, we keep going down. So I'm gonna pull this off here so we can peel this back. Here's our ulnar, there's our radial. If you remember, we said that they kind of feed down here and give way into some of these arches. So now, what are some of these arches that we have here? We have two arches. The first one is if we come down here, we have number 13 here. And that's gonna be this one right here that I'm gonna pull back on. And that is called the superficial palmar arch. So number 13 here that I'm pulling on is the superficial palmar arch. Underneath that, I'm gonna pull on this one, it's deep to that. So this is called the deep palmar arch. So two vessels, 13, superficial palmar arch, 12, deep palmar arch, okay? Now, that is gonna cover those, but if we come off over here, remember here we had the superficial palmar arch? There's some branches that are gonna come off of that, right here, and this is gonna be called the common palmar digital arteries. Okay? Then if we come up off the common palmar digital arteries, going to the digits, this artery right here, for example, and this one right there, that's called the proper palmar digital arteries. Okay, that covers that. All right, so again, so we were looking at the palmar side down here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this guy over, and if we flip it over now, we're gonna be able to see the dorsum of the hand down here. Now, there is a reason why we should see this because there's going to be um, two important vessels that we want to take a look at here. Now, this one right here that I'm, I'm kind of tugging on right there, this guy is actually going to be called the dorsal carpal arch. You can see the dorsal carpal arch right there. The dorsal carpal arch will then go into another structure, 
and that's going to be this guy right here, okay, in between the metacarpal bones. That is called the dorsal metacarpal arteries. So you have the dorsal carpal arch and the dorsal metacarpal arteries, which will actually form an anastomosis with the uh, proper palmar digital arteries, okay, to supply the digits. All right, so that covers the arteries of the vascular arm. All right, so now we're going to cover, uh, cover some of the veins of the actual uh, vascular arm. We're going to work our way up. But I want you to realize, if you guys have already seen our video on the wire man, it's going to be a lot easier to see some of these vessels. It's going to be harder to see them here. So I'm just going to ask you guys to just trust me for that, okay? So if you come here, we're going to start here at the digits. This is the palmar side of the hand. So this is the palmar digital veins. Now, what happens is you do have an arch here. It's pretty hard to see right here, but it is called the palmar venous arch. Okay, so you do have a palmar venous arch right here. And that one's important because that one was fed, if you guys remember, by the wire man, by the radial and the ulnar vein. There's another arch on the dorsum of the hand, which is pretty hard to see, but let me go ahead and try to flip this guy over here. If I do that, you can see here that we have the dorsal digital veins, the dorsal metacarpal veins, and there's an arch here that's, like I said, it's really hard to see here, but it's supposed to be connecting the cephalic and the basilic vein together, okay? But again, it's not going to be uh, easily seen on this model. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it back over into the normal position here. Let's go ahead and work our way up continuously. So we had the palmar digital veins. I wanted you guys to say that there was a palmar venous arch. Now, here's where it gets important. I'm going to pull out here on the most outer vessels here. If you see, I'm pulling on number 17. This guy's coming all the way down here to that dorsal venous arch, and it's on the actual uh, ulnar side. So therefore, this vein right here has to be the basilic vein. Okay, so that's the basilic vein. The other vein is coming down here towards the dorsal venous arch also, and it's on the thumb side, the radius side. So this vein right here has to be the cephalic vein. So we have two important veins. 17 is the basilic, and this one right here, what I'm pulling on my right hand, is going to be the cephalic vein. Now there's a vein that runs in between them, which is right here, number 16. Number 16 is, has two names. You can either call it the median vein, or because it runs in the antebrachial region, you can call this one the median antebrachial vein. Okay, so so far we have three important veins. Cephalic, basilic, median antebrachial. Now, as we come up, via the basilic and the cephalic. We're going to run into this little anticubital region right here. So as we get into uh, this anticubital region right here, remember we said that we had uh, this vessel here. Let me kind of pull this out here. This one right here was the basilic vein, and this one over here was the cephalic vein. Okay. Well, the cephalic vein and the basilic vein, they run up through the uh, antebrachial region. And there's a little accessory vein right here. You see number 21? This right here is called the accessory cephalic vein. So here's the basilic. Here's the accessory cephalic, which feeds into the cephalic vein again. Okay? Now here's where it's cool. The basilic vein and the cephalic vein form an anastomosis with one another. Okay? So if you can kind of follow here, here's the basilic vein. And then here's an anastomosis, and this part ripped off. but it should be connecting that part to the cephalic vein. So it kind of forms like a nice little V, okay? That right there that I'm showing you with the V is called the median anticubital vein. Commonly use this vein for, you know, venipunctures when they're taking blood. But again, basilic, cephalic, the anastomosis that's connecting the two is the median anticubital vein. Okay, now, you what happens is there's veins again over here. If you look right here, I'm kind of running my uh, fingernail around that. That right there is called the radial vein. This one right there, right next to it, the, ra the radial artery. Same thing over here. This is the ulnar artery. So this vein that's running right here is going to be called the ulnar vein. Okay, so ulnar artery, ulnar vein. Same thing over here. Radial artery, radial vein. All right. Now, what happens is the radial uh, vein and the ulnar vein come up. 
And when they come together, they are going to fuse and they're going to form this vein right here. This vein right here, which they're showing by number 22, running up through here, is called the brachial vein. Okay? So this is called the brachial vein. What happens is, the basilic vein, you're going to see by 17, running up here, going up here. This is still the basilic vein. The basilic vein should empty into what's called the brachial vein. So if you follow this up here, here's your basilic vein. They're taking a piece of this vein right here that I'm going to pull up on right there. That's called the brachial vein. The basilic vein should empty into the brachial vein. And then the brachial vein feeds into this next one here, which is called the axillary vein. So you have to remember that. So you have to remember this. If we come up here, 17, that's the basilic vein. It's going to come up, come up, come up. And it's going to empty into this vein right here, which is called the brachial vein. So the basilic vein empties into the brachial vein. The brachial vein will then empty into this vein right here, number 18, which is called the axillary vein. Now that's different from the cephalic vein because this right here that I'm pulling on is the cephalic vein. If you remember, there was the accessory cephalic and then the cephalic comes all the way up here and dumps directly into the axillary vein. All right, so that covers the veins of the vascular arm. All right, engineers, so in this video, we covered the arteries and the veins of the vascular arm. I really hope it helped. I hope it made sense. And if you guys did like it and it did help, please hit that like button. Comment down in the comment section and please subscribe, guys. Also, if you guys get a chance, go out and check out our Facebook, our Instagram, even our Patreon account. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, I'll see you guys next time, engineers.